Violence against journalists is on the rise and more attacks are threatening press freedom across the globe. UN statistics show at least 74 journalists have been killed this year alone and most of the cases go unresolved. Among the victims is veteran Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akleh. She was shot dead by Israeli forces while covering an Israeli raid in the occupied West Bank. The most dangerous country for journalists is Mexico. At least 18 members of the press have been killed there this year alone, marking a new record. Also high on the list are Ukraine, Pakistan, the Philippines and Brazil. OK, joining me now on set is Frane Marovic. He is the executive director of the International Press Institute. Frane, thanks so much for being on this program. Thank you for having me. Al Jazeera journalist, as we've mentioned, she was killed this year, along with dozens of journalists, as we've just heard. Despite admissions by Israel that it was most likely Israeli soldiers, there has been no justice for her case. If there's no hope of justice for Shireen, what hope is there for some of the lesser-known journalists who have been killed while reporting? I mean, Shireen's case is particularly appalling because she was killed in broad daylight wearing protective gear, showing that she's a member of the press and to your question in terms of um, how to ensure justice it's to ensure that there is a continuous campaign just because there is no justice now that doesn't mean that there should never be so the campaign needs to continue from our side uh, shireen was named by ipi as the world press freedom hero so an eminent panel of editors uh, recognize this um, we will continue campaigning as well the other um, freedom press freedom organizations and what we have seen is that when there are high-profile cases, something can get done. Uh, the statistics are that only one in nine uh, cases of killings of journalists do become resolved where the perpetrators are convicted. But what is important is the ones that are resolved are usually the most high-profile cases. Mm. So we have to continue campaigning. We have to continue bringing it on the agenda of those governments who can do something, which in this case is the Israeli government, but also those governments who are on the sideline, who have partnerships with, the, with that government, they should also be the ones demanding for justice. We just heard from the previous guests about the power of, of social media in terms of, of hate speech and, and misinformation. Violence can manifest itself not just in a physical way, but a lot of journalists are facing violence online as well. Absolutely. Um, and this is, in a way, a precursor to physical violence in many cases. It does two things. First of all, it tries to threaten the journalists so they don't continue doing their work, uh, to frighten them into giving up their journalist work. But second of all, it creates an atmosphere of impunity. And this is even more appalling when it's done by political leaders. It does create an atmosphere of enabling uh, those people who might actually take um, uh, violence into their hands and do something physical against those journalists, it makes them feel empowered and enabled. This is an appalling trend that we have seen on a political level um, in many, many countries, um, in democracies as well as those countries which are not democracies. And this is something that needs to be attacked and this is something that needs to be eliminated. What we have also seen is threats against female journalists, which are particularly mm. um, poignant. What we have seen is that uh, female journalists are more often targeted than their male counterparts. And then... Um, uh, apologies, but we've just run short of time. I'm sorry, Frane, but uh, we really appreciate your, appreciate your time on this issue. It's an important one to uh, raise awareness of. Frane Maravich, the Executive Director of the International Press Institute. Thank you. Thank you.